We check in with the highest ranking statewide elected Democrat in the state of Florida to get a, a sense of the state of the election in that state. Uh, check this out. Nikki Fried is with us. Check this out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends. And subscribe to our channel. So the most, uh, I was going to say most powerful, I guess highest ranking Democrat in Florida is uh, the Florida Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Nikki Fried. Nikki also was a keynote speaker at the Democratic National Convention and uh, is, uh, you know, just all over the, the Florida vote here, uh, an, an attorney and an activist. And Commissioner Fried is on the line with us right now. Uh, Nikki's uh, Twitter handle is N-I-K-K-I Fried, F-R-I-E-D-F-L, Nikki Fried, F-L, as in Florida. Um, and Commissioner Fried, welcome back to the program. Uh, I'm curious your take on, on what, the, what the voter landscape in Florida is looking like right now. You know, uh, well, first off, thank you for having me back on today. You know, voters are voting uh, here in the state of Florida. Uh, we have record number of, of, of vote turnout. Uh, we saw the Democrats, you know, really spend a lot of time in vote by mail, and, and we saw significant leads going into early voting. And, and even as of today, uh, we are going in uh, to Election Day with uh, more votes and, and leads than, than was going into it in 2016. So the people here on the ground, uh, as I've traveled the entire state, are excited excited to come out and vote. Uh, and we're seeing that um, throughout the entire state, uh, that people have gotten to the polls. They have found ways to vote. So we still have uh, one more day. But, of course, Florida's always closed. And so I don't anticipate it being yeah. anything but that. Yeah, I, I understand that you're going to a, you're going to be speaking at a rally uh, when you after this phone call, actually, um, with uh, President Obama and, and others. Um, that you know, it's it's pretty powerful stuff. What's going on? That that Florida might be in play. I, you know, two thousand was you know in theory anyway decided by five hundred and thirty seven votes. Uh, although uh, you know, uh, Jeb Bush had figured out a way to knock ninety thousand African Americans off the voting roll, rolls in the months preceding that. Do you anticipate a an ongoing problem like this? I mean, is your is is Governor DeSantis purging the voter rolls as aggressively as Jeb Bush was doing? You know, certainly, uh, Governor DeSantis has done everything possible to kind of suppress the vote. Uh, you know, from yep, having purging uh, to having letters coming out from the Secretary of State as of a couple of weeks ago, uh, a lot focusing on our returning citizens to our state. Uh, the Republican legislature has really uh, just torn apart uh, our, our constitutional amendment that allowed uh, returning felons uh, who have paid their, their, their restitution and paid their fines and fees to be back onto the voting rolls. Uh, and unfortunately, the Republican legislature added additional hoops that these individuals had to jump through. And the governor is continuing to hold up his position up in the courts, uh, not allowing 1.4 million of individuals who were supposed to have been covered under this amendment uh, to be added to the voting rolls. Uh, so we only were able to add of that, you know, 1.3, 1.4, only 150,000. Um, but certainly those 150,000 are coming out to, to vote uh, in a first presidential elections and some of them ever in, in their lifetime. Uh, so the governor has certainly tried doing everything he can to block um, access to the polls uh, and is continuing to, to do everything he can to support uh, the one person in his life that matters, and that's, you know, President Trump and making sure he, he gets reelected. Uh, and so the rest of the state of Florida can have something to say about that, though. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, is, is Florida one of the states that counts mail-in ballots and early ballots or early vote uh, uh, before Election Day so that those numbers will be included in your totals that you're reporting out tomorrow night, or, or does Florida count them after? Nope, we have already started counting. Uh, so depending on the county, some are um, already going to be up to speed. So it obviously depends on how many uh, vote by mail ballots come in tomorrow. Um, but we will have, you know, election results, you know, uh, God willing, that night. Uh, it's going to be close. And so whether or not we go into recounts, but, but certainly everything will be counted, um, you know, sometime in the course of the next uh, night, we'll, we'll get results. That's great. You are the highest ranking elected Democrat in the state of Florida. Um, what what's your sense of how Florida politics might change if uh, well, first of all, it, are, are, the, are the Florida House or Senate uh, either of those? Is there a possibility of either of those flipping in this election? And, and how might even just a just a simple, you know, uh, Biden victory change the politics of Florida? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was the only one who's been elected statewide uh, in almost over 20 years, uh, and but I only won by a little under 7,000 votes. 
Uh, so, you know, we're, we're seeing again this, you know, NPAs are, are breaking towards us in, in record numbers and we didn't see in 2016. Uh, and we in 2018, it was a little bit of a break towards the Democrats, but, you know, pretty evenly split. Uh, so certainly when we see a lot of our down ballot candidates, which is where I'm spending a lot of my time as I crisscross the state talking to our incredible House and Senate candidates, our congressional delegation candidates, uh, as well as even our, our local mayors and county and city commissioners. You know, you're seeing a lot of, of upsurge uh, and a lot of people who are getting to those individual voters across our state, the MPAs, and moderate Republicans who are just tired of the rhetoric coming out of this administration and are just wanting some normality. Somebody at the top of, of who's got control in the White House who's caring about everybody, not just his supporters. And so I do think that we are going to get close in the Florida House and the Florida Senate. I, I don't necessarily anticipate a, a flip in power. Um, but certainly getting a lot closer uh, to having a, an equally balanced a legislature. And then, of course, uh, me being a, the only member in the Florida cabinet, you know, really having a consolidation that the Democrats are finally on our opportunity to have our messaging really transcend partisan politics, that we are talking to the MPAs, talking to moderate Republicans, and are really going to see a, a turn, uh, and especially when we bring it home in Florida for Joe Biden and we have a, a Biden you know, presidency, uh, you will start seeing a lot of turning inside of our, our elected officials, knowing that they have to start governing more in the center, which is a reflection of really where our state is. I'm assuming NPA must stand for no preference. These are people who are not registered as yes, Democrats no or Republicans. Yeah, I, I apologize. No party affiliations. So those are independent voters. Oh, no here party affiliation. That, that register okay. as, yeah, as, yeah. as NPAs, yeah. which is about, you know, as of right now, we have over 9 million votes cast. Uh, and of those nine, uh, about over 2 million of those are, are NPAs. So certainly a, a huge swing in there for Joe Biden. Um, hearing everything from 5 to 19 points um, will be the difference in this election. We're talking with Commissioner Nikki Freed, the Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, the highest ranking statewide elected Democrat in the state of Florida, attorney and activist as well. Um, Commissioner Freed, back in, in the 1930s, when Franklin Roosevelt passed Social Security, the Republicans declared war on it. And literally since 1935 have, you know, been trying to destroy Social Security or at least privatize it, sell it to the, you know, give it to the big New York banks. Since 1967, when Medicare was passed, they have been trying to destroy Medicare. Um, they have, uh, since, since 1980, since, since Reagan came into power, done everything they can to raise taxes on low-income people. And now we discover that this Trump tax cut of 2017 has massive tax increases that kick in starting next year for people who earn less than $75,000 a year while it keeps taxes down on people at the top. And, you know, they've, they've fought for years and years and years against health care. My sense has been in the past when I've talked about these things on the air, everybody goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Republicans talk about this and, you know, and eliminating the right to abortion and, and maybe even outlawing birth control. And all. The Republicans talk about this stuff, but we don't take them seriously, uh, you know, and we're going to vote for them because, uh, I don't know, they call themselves Christians and they have guns or something. Um, do you think that your your uh, no party affiliation, your NPAs, your un, you know un, unaffiliated voters, and even some of your Republican voters in the state of Florida are starting to figure out that all these years that Republicans have been talking about destroying Social Security, Medicare, um, changing our you know rigging our tax code to benefit rich people and screw average average people, um, doing away with health care and protections against big corporations that actually they were deadly serious about all this because we've got, you know, we're so close to seeing so much of that agenda played out. Is that changing people's minds finally? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think that you've seen, you know, when you have right now a, a Republican-controlled a Senate, Republican-controlled White House, and you've seen how, what they have done with the ACA, you know, every step along the way trying to derail that. Uh, you're seeing it still in the court systems. And now that there's a 6-3 majority um, on the conservative swing of the courts. And so all these things that have really been moving the ball forward on issues of social justice, of uh, gay rights, of abortion and protecting Roe v. Wade, uh, that's in jeopardy. And, and they're serious about that. I mean, look at their actions. I always say actions speak louder than words. Uh, look exactly at what is happening and, you know, how they're trying to push some of these cases up in front of the Supreme Court as fast as possible. Um, because there is conversation about the real enemies. And you're also seeing that, too, as far as if you look at the, re of, of the current economy, that is, we're in a, a K recovery, meaning that the top one percenters um, continue to increase in, in their wealth. 
uh, especially through you know the stimulus packages, the, the nine you know six billion dollar trillion dollars that were printed and given to the top one percenters. Yet the top, the lower part of our of our economy is continuing to go in a spiral downward. Um, so I think that you're showing yeah. even more greater economic disparity than you had in the previous year. Spot on, Commissioner Nikki Freed of Florida. Uh, Nikki Freed FL is the Twitter handle. Uh, Commissioner Freed, thanks so much for dropping by. Great talking with you.